Welcome back Math 7. Today we are going to have one lesson that deal with every Math 7 probability unit outcomes. So this video will have about three different parts. The first part will be talking about calculating probability. Second part will be talking about the sample space. And third part we're going to talk about theoretical and um, experimental probability. So as you may notice, when it comes to calculating the probability, you need to think about two parts. One is identifying identifying favorable outcomes and total outcome. That can be, for example, if you have six-sided die, that means you, for example, when you roll a dice, uh, will it be even number that will come out, odd number that will come out, is it smaller than five, those kind of things, those are favorable outcomes. Total, total outcomes are the one where it's more related to sample space, except when it comes to one material, whatever the total possibility. Six-sided dice have total six possibility, something like that. On the other hand, when it comes to the second part, I like to say formula and format of probability expression. That is something that I want to point that out also. When it comes to formula, I'm going to put fraction formula. If it's considered formula, probability is always have a numerator and denominator. I'm just going to make a little space. There we go. On numerator side, you have favorable outcome or outcomes. Sometimes it's one outcome. Sometimes it's more than an outcome. This is where condition play a huge role, A or B, something like that. And denominator, you have total outcomes. When it comes to total outcome, it's always more than one number. So generally, when it comes to this trend over here, we can conclude that most of the time, favorable outcome numbers or values smaller than the total outcome numbers or values. And I'm going to explain to you why this conclusion plays a huge role. First of all, when people say favorable outcome, you have a certain condition. So I'm going to point that part out. The favorable outcome always have a condition. And that condition can be numerous. It actually depends by the questions. It can be even number, odd number. If it's letter related, is it vowel? Is it consonant? Etc. etc. So long story short, we need to understand that condition is altering condition depends on the question. On the other hand, total outcome, this Total outcome over here, it's always theoretical, and this value do not change. Total outcome do not change because it's a theoretical value.
Next part that you need to understand about probability is before we talk about condition, some kind of materials used for probability. And when it comes to second part, condition. And I put if it is applicable. Let's talk about these materials first. When I talk about materials, ladies and gentlemen, there are several tools that we use. And when I say about several tools, those are the one, for example, die, singular, or dice, plural. When it comes to dice, know the fact that most of them are six-sided, but it is possible you can have a variety of different parts. Like it can be four-sided, six-sided, eight-sided, blah, blah, blah. When it comes to the other object, you need to understand about the spinner. Spinner have a different sectors. So that part you need to understand also. The other part probably can be the marble, jelly beans or some kind of letter in a hat or box etc etc know the fact that depends on these material um, key thing that you need to focus is basically how these material ladies and gentlemen can affect the total outcome which is denominator. So know the fact that if the die is four-sided, no wonder it's something over four. If, however, you have more than one dice, let's say six-sided dice, one and another, then it's one out of 36 because six times six, that's 36. And we're gonna talk about those total probability more when it comes to the others. Uh, like, uh, what is it called? Sample space section. Conditions, it's quite various. Like I mentioned, condition may apply in two situations. The first situation, you have one object and one independent event. Then, I want you to understand that you don't need to make a table or tree diagram to find that event. For example, what's the probability of having two in a six-sided die? Then it's one over six, something like that. Even number, there's two, four, six, so three. Three out of six, that's 50% possibility, something like that. However, when it comes to other part, you, more, you may have two objects, and this is where two independent event can occur and at this point you have to make either a table or a tree diagram to go through that situation then once you find out then you can basically pick desirable outcomes and find fraction first then you find decimal values, then eventually you're going to find out a percentage or ratio. And I'm going to do this example on the next page. Okay, let's do a quick example. Last example. Let's say we have one coin and uh, five, no, four sectors have four sectored spinner. So in that case, I'm going to do a quick drawing coin that has head and basically tail at the back. When it comes to the spinner, And let's just put some letter, B, B, 
F um, A, I don't know, something like that. And when it comes to probability, always know the fact that you start with the big P bracket open and whatever desirable outcome or condition that make the desirable outcome goes here. And something that uh, I can have is head N, you will have uh, bow situation. This is what you need to do, ladies and gentlemen. The total outcome part is easy. If we're talking about just the coin, coin has two possibilities, which is head and tail, as you may know. So that's why the total possibility is two for the, for the coin. On the other hand, when it comes to this sector, I know some of them repeat like B and B. However, it doesn't matter. We have one, two, three, four different sectors. So we have four total outcome. Now, in math situation, if I think about two events, I'm purpose, on purpose, I'm doing something that is tricky. There can be a one sector situation, sorry, one object situation, then you don't have to do this. But if there's multiple things happen, I mentioned to you that I can multiply the total outcome of two different type of event, which is two times four. That means eight is my denominator. On the top, however, we can find out our probability. This part is a little advanced one that I'm doing already, so we are not making sample space yet, but head and A is the only one, so it is one over uh, eight in fraction answer. If it's ratio answer, here's what you do. Literally numerator and denominator, one dot dot eight. That's how you do. If it's decimal answer, then we need to do a little bit of a multiplication. You have to multiply everything by 125 if it's denominator of eight. Some of you guys who wonder about those, go back to the fraction part of the probability. There are some common one like quarter, multiply by 25 to make it 100, something like that. So 125 over 1,000 is what's happening. You can use your calculator, obviously. 0 0.125 is our decimal answer. And percentage answer, ladies and gentlemen, is whatever decimal answer multiplied by 100, then you will have 12.5%, something like that. This is one of the example. And as you can see, know the fact that um, depends on what type of condition that you have, the calculation can be different. I can easily say P and have tail and any consonant. Then the probability goes quite a lot in here. Although the total possibility is a possibility, but we will figure out why tail and consonant is more than one because tail B, tail B tail f that is already three out of eight which is um, zero point three seven five which is about thirty seven point five percent something like that and right next we're gonna do sample space lesson and we're gonna use this example to prove this point. All right, let's continue our second part. Sample space, ladies and gentlemen. Sample space refer or it shows all possible outcomes for um, the probability that involves more than one event. So what I mean by that is, I'm going to strictly use my example that I used in the previous section, coin and spinner. As you may notice, two of the independent material. Those are the good example. You have, although there are actually more than one, two ways that you can make a sample space but the easiest way that you can do is construct a table or 
you can do tree diagram. So those two, ladies and gentlemen. Without further ado, I'm going to use table to describe. <clears throat> I'm going to put spinner on the top section and bottom part, coin. When it comes to coin, you do know that head, which I'm going to use the letter H, tail, which I'm going to use the P. And when it comes to spinner, I believe this section has B, B, A, and F. There you go. So as you may notice, the good thing about table is I can combine any of a possibility in this inside portion of the table. Like for example, head and B can be one of the combination. Same thing can happen for the another, H and A, H and F, tail and B, tail and B, tail and A, and tail and F, something like that. So we do have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight total outcome. And I can say these are eight total outcomes. This is how you use, um, how can I say, table for finding out the sample space, which is all of the possible outcome. Or some people choose to do tree diagram, which means you're starting with one of the objects or event number one. But from there, we can decide how many branches that occur with using our next event, which I'm going to call it event number two. And that's the one where one, two, three, four, two, three, four. The one that has B, B, A, F, B, B, A, F, something like that. And obviously, once you combine all of these outcomes together, then you will find that I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight total outcomes. That's what you can do for the second outcome, which is known as sample space. All right, let's continue our um, third part and the last part, theoretical and experimental probability. Um, definition does play a huge role but application of that definition is more important. When I mention about theoretical probability, it is uh, based on the pure math, not based on chances. So based on probability calculation and no uh, trials an experiment is needed. So what I mean by that is, if you find something that says theoretical probability, that value does not change. Quick example. If we are talking about coin, if we are talking about coin, Coin and theoretical probability. <clears throat> if you're talking about the coin, it doesn't matter how many times you're throwing the coin. The probability of having head is always going to be 1 over 2, which means it's going to be 50%. If you're talking about tail, that is also 1 over 2, which is talking about 50%. So that 
when you add these guys together, head and tail possibility, then you will know that those two make eventually 100% because the theoretical probability does not change and we are not relying on any type of, it does have a little bit of foundation called random chances. Yes, we're talking about that, but we're not talking about any bias pattern. On the other hand, when it comes to experimental property, oh, sorry, not property, experimental probability, it is based on your data. When I say data, it does rely on your trials, how many trials that you did, and uh, how much of experimental data that you have. So funny thing about experimental probability is the probability val value may change as we do more trials. A quick example. Let's say I'm throwing coin um, eight times, something like that. Tossing coins eight times. So, always good idea to serve it to Google. Mm. Dice roller. Even though we're not talking about dice, there is, there you go, flip a coin. So we have tail. So here's what I'm going to do, head, tail. It's a good idea to have some kind of setting up system. We have tail occur. So I'm gonna have a little bit of one tick. The second simulation, let's see. Uh, flip again. Head. So we did two. Trial. Three trial. I so far did three total trials. And what I'm going to do is a little more for trial tail again fifth sixth oh my seventh and our last one eight which is tail it is kind of surprising data because the number amount of head that I had is two. And when it comes to tail, one, two, three, four, five, six. So if I talk about, I'm not now talk about the probability between theoretical now. Let's talk about probability of having head in experimental value. It is actually two over eight for the head. And when it comes to tail, it turned out to be six out of eight because that's what my data says. If it's two, two over eight, that can be simplified to one over four. And uh, weird enough, it's only 25% of chance for the head. On the other hand, this is three over four for tail. So it is actually 75% of the chance when you look at the percentage value for each of these categories. So long story short, how that happened? Well, as you may notice, first of all, 25% and 75%, these two values are not necessarily talking about our theoretical value in this situation. In fact, when it comes to these two head and tail possibility of one out of four and three out of four or one to four if it's ratio, three to four if it's ratio, 25 and 75% is 100% relying on our experimental data, which is the one that we did over here. Now, another thing, if you remember, the probability value may change as we, as we do more trial. Let's quickly double check. What if I do two more? Head again, 
Then I have one more hit. Last one. Tail again. So the funny thing is, if we do more trial, the probability of the head now turning into one, two, three. Three out of 10, that's 30%. If you think about probability of the tail, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven out of 10, that is 70% precisely. So, as you may notice, just because we change our amount of trial, you notice that the whole trend changes 25 to 30, 75 to 70. But know the fact that regardless of these two situations, probability of having head and tail always theoretically remain 50 and 50. So know the fact that when it comes to experimental probability and theoretical, most of the time these two are not equal. There are a few cases that they do share the same value, but most of the time they don't. And that is today's review lesson.